Well, thank you for joining me again in this third video in our set of four in which I show you how to build a replica Spitfire Mark IX flight stick using 3D printed parts that you can print on the cheapest of 3D printers. These were all printed on a, on a printer that cost under $200. Now this video is a bit longer than the last two as we'll be achieving quite a lot today and we'll end up very close indeed to a fully working flight stick that you can use in DCS, Microsoft Flight Simulator, whatever your preference. So let's get started. This is where we got to at the end of my last video. Whoa, 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 are you saying? That doesn't look quite like the last one. Okay, yes, I have replaced this black angle bracket with a green one. I wanted to match the paint of the Mark IX simulator I test flew earlier this year at Bultby Academy. Uh, this green ESUN PLA is, is hardly a perfect Pantone match, but I'm happier it's a little bit closer. Actually, the really keen-eyed amongst you might notice also that the shape of these tubes is a bit different. I've improved it. You can now run the wires through more easily and also the wires exit to the front instead of the back, which makes things easier later on. Let's talk about tools now. This is what you'll need for the video. The trusty PH2 Phillips head. Uh, you'll need the PH1 as well. We've got a couple of smaller screws in there. And again, this is just a bit kind of a cheap thing, um, and a 3D printed holder. You'll need a ruler. We need to get some wire lengths just right in this video, so that's a useful thing. A Sharpie, um, an Allen key. If you don't have an Allen key, I've provided a 3D print of one that will do the job. So you could skip that if you don't have it. Just some sort of screwdriver, just for kind of fishing things out. Wire cutters, uh, Pliers are optional, they just make things slightly easier, but you can do everything with your fingers. And that's another optional thing, a little bulldog clip, just to help you keep some wires out of the way later. I won't go through all the hardware, like the bearings, as I presume you've got all those ready and, and to hand. But let's have a quick look at the 3D printed parts. We've got the main body, that's the main thing. And a bracket, a plate, which covers over some wires. A retainer, which will hold the pitch spring in place. Then we've got the pitch lever, and that's part of that. And then there's another mag hall unit which goes into the pitch. This is a slightly different design than before. It's, it's actually a couple of bearings which sandwich the pitch lever and make sure it's good and sturdy. So we have a couple of parts that hold the bearings there and create that sandwich around the pitch lever. Now I'm going to be cutting the video a bit to keep things flowing, but I'd recommend a good hour for you to build this. There are five steps and I recommend a slow patient approach to avoid getting all the wires tangled up. They can go a bit like spaghetti if you're not careful. So these are the five steps. We will be fitting the angle bracket to the body, like this. We'll be routing the wires over this bridge. Then we're going to route the wires through the pitch lever. Then we'll add the spring and that sandwich style mag hole. Then we're just going to do a little tidying up and put the lid on. So let's start with step one. We're going to mount the angle bracket to the body. But we'll find it easier first if we take this mag hole off. Mount it to the body and then we'll put the angle bracket on it. So I will remove that now. Now that was something to do slowly and carefully. We don't want to yank these wires out of the sensors. Now we're going to thread these three wires through this little guide on the side here. So start with a couple. Okay, they're through. Now let's slot the mag hole into the base unit. You can see there's a little groove there where the wires can escape from the back. So let's press that in. So that should go in nice and easily. And then we can just carefully pull through a little bit more wire. There we go. And now we need to fix the mag hole unit to the body. For, so for that we need eight mil screws. Take some care here because there are a few times when you can get away with a, a screw that's a different length, but not here. If you put one that's slightly long, you'll damage the unit. So we're going to just test that we've got the 8mm there. Now before we fit this angle bracket back onto the mag hole unit, just take a look at this D-shaped plug. 
because that needs to mesh exactly with the angle bracket. And when you're fitting it, you're going to sort of knock this around a bit. So the thing to watch for, you want the left hand side of it at 9 o'clock. So that's the kind of slope. So make a note of that now. Now we're going to fit the spring to the body. Now the easy way to do this is to take two 20mm screws, they're kind of oversized, put them through underneath, put your fingers there. Now we're going to put that dowel pin in the slot in the middle. Take this retaining plate and put that over the top of the screws with the flat bit to the bottom. The little curved lug in the middle points towards the mag hole unit. Get that over the top there and you can kind of press that down, keep things held, get the thread started and then with the screws only partially into the retaining plate so that you can lift that plate up and down you can get some clearance to the top of the dowel pin and this allows us just to take the roll spring on the end of the angle bracket push it through there hold it over the top of the dowel let it drop let the retaining plate drop so that you now have the dowel pin held firmly and you can just let that dangle a bit as you turn things over and tighten up that retaining plate. So that's the spring held in place and now it's time to mesh the D with the angle bracket. So I'm checking there that the left hand side is on about 9 o'clock and I will hold the angle bracket, just tension it up a little bit. There we go, it's in. And when it's in, you'll see that the gap between the angle bracket and the body is barely a millimeter either side. So now we can put the 14 mil screw back in. That's step one complete. Now we have two sets of wires. One set, six wires coming out of the angle bracket. Another set, three wires coming out of the roll sensor. We're going to be running all of these wires along this bridge here. You can see it's shaped like a bridge and in fact you can see there's also a little bridge on top of the big bridge. Now all six wires from the angle bracket are going through that bridge on a bridge. And they're going through in a very particular order. So the order is white, blue, yellow, green, red, black. And we're going to feed all these wires through the bridge on the bridge, like this. So there we are with all the wires pulled through snugly, but we're going to feed some back because we want some slack here. We need some play to allow the roll action. If you put your ruler here, you want those wires just pushing up, kind of like that. And then we're going to use the Sharpie and we're going to just mark them. And whatever happens now as we route the wires around the, around the bridge here, we don't want to pull any more of that through or we're going to prevent this angle. Now I'm afraid it's confession time and what I need to confess is that on this particular design we're not going to have an independent machine gun and cannon. And the reason is we're using this RJ45 to connect the stick to our hub. It's got eight wires and we're maxed out. Now we'll actually be dealing with 12 wires, but you can share some positives and some ground. But we can't share enough, so we're going to have to sacrifice a fire button. Now I'm going to be doing a second video later, where we do have both a machine gun and a cannon. And I will either use a second one of these, just to give us more capacity, or I'm going to be sharing some of the ground wires between devices. Now strictly, the guys who make the circuit board say that if you share ground wires you get a little bit of crosstalk, but I'm going to do some tests on that, try and find out which particular combination hopefully I can use in order to do that sharing, free up a wire, and then we can have both a machine gun and a cannon. Uh, if I can't make that happen, then yes, we'll have to go with two RJ45s. So for now we're going to be cutting the yellow and the green wire short, and we're going to be joining them. In fact, we're going to be making a few joints along this bridge. To do that, we're going to be using these flange-headed screws. So, in fact, let's get all four of these in now. 
You need the pH 1 for this. So let's get that fitted. So that's the four flange headed screws. So we're going to be joining these two fire wires and continuing them out along a third wire which will be yellow. So I'm going to make a generous amount of bare cable at the end of the new yellow. I'm going to cut these wires around here will do. So fairly short. Expose a pretty generous amount and then just twist all three together. Now if I just bend, create a bend in there, like this, then I can take this hook that I've made, fit it round this flange, so it goes round clockwise, and tighten it up. Now I've looped this longer wire on the inside, so let's just free that up. Now I said we can share some ground wires. This black is a ground and it will be joined shortly by another ground. So for now we'll just cut this short and fit it to one of the joints. Now we can share these reds as well. We have the red from the angle bracket and a red from the roll lever. Now I've fed the red from the roll lever underneath the bridge so it's not looping around the bridge, it's on this side of the bridge. And we're going to have a third red which will pass on through the pitch lever later on. So we're now going to join three wires and we're going to do that with that furthest flange. So time to cut these short Now one thing I've just done is just to make sure that I haven't pulled too much wire through. I've just fed back these wires here to make sure that that sharpie mark is still exposed. It would be all too easy to take a little bit too much wire while we're doing this and then uh, lose the play that we need. So now we have these three reds. So that's the three reds joined up at this far flange. Okay, now I have pulled through some of the red cable here. What I'm going to do is start to use these little wire guides and just press that red down there into the slot and make sure I feed some back through and make sure that they're all, they've all got plenty of slack. So that's three joints done and actually now there is one thing I've overlooked here and that is that I just put the black in by itself to that particular joint there. I need to add another black wire to that Okay, that's the black added to the black. And then there is a final joint at the bottom, this green wire. So let's put that one in. That's the green one in. And we now have six wires here and two wires there. These two wires are the roll wires. So that completes step two. Okay, let's move on to step three in which we're going to be running these wires through this pitch lever. But first we'll do a little bit of tidying up. Now we have some wires here from the roll lever. They're poking out to the left. Let us feed them back under the bridge. So we've got them under the bridge and out of the way of this area where the pitch spring is going to be. And we're going to do a little bit of tidying here we're going to use these particular wire guides at the top just to keep things tidy. So we can put the oh, little screwdriver is useful here. We can just poke the red one through there and the red one we can go through here. Looking good but for now I'm not going to put these blue and white wires through there. I will put them through the top 
I'll also put this red wire through this channel here just to keep that out of the way of everything. Let's double check again we haven't pulled too much through to allow the movement there on the roll. Now we've got eight wires in total here and we have two blues and two whites so we don't want to mix these up and what we're going to do now is separate all those eight wires into two groups of four. We're going to have a group A and a group B. Now group A will include the blue and the white which came from this roll lever at the back. It will also include the red and the black. So let's put these here for now. And then these four wires are group B. So let's start with group B here and one thing I want to do is just make sure that everything is the same length. It will be easier to work with. In fact that's, that's pretty good already. But I will just trim those to be the same length. And then let's do the same for group A. Check there the same length. Okay, let's trim those. In fact, there we go. That's group A. Now, these group A and group B wires are going to be thread through these slots in this bearing housing. But we need to be careful again that we don't thread too much through and lose the slack that we need inside the body. So let's use our sharpie again and make a mark at six centimeters. And we'll do the same with group A. Okay, let's thread these wires through. We're going to have a very particular order for this, which is white, blue, yellow, green. And with a bit of luck, all four of those wires will just thread here and pop out so that they can be, there we go. So that's group B, threaded through the slot and pulled through to the sharpie mark. Now let's do the same with group A. And there's a color order to this as well. It's the same white blue to start with and then it's red black. So let's thread all four of those. So there we go, group A and group B. And just check the order again. White, blue, yellow, green. And white, blue, red, black. Now we're going to feed these wires through this bearing so that we can sit the bearing in the housing. Okay, so that's the bearing slotting in place. And again, make sure that we keep our blues and whites separate. We've got the same order as before. Looking good. Now we need to pass this through a plug and the plug sits that way. So let's feed these wires through the plug. And group A. Now I haven't used this bulldog clip yet, but if you're struggling trying to keep these two groups of wires together and separate from each other, that's something you can use. So it would be great at this stage if you could avoid any tangling and maintain the same order, white, blue, yellow, green, white, blue, yellow, green, white, blue, red, black, white, blue, red, black. Now this next one is a little bit more fiddly. We're going to pass all these wires through this pitch lever. Now we're going to start with group A this time. So let's get our order again. White, blue, red, black. So there's the white, blue, red, black. And if you hold the pitch lever this way, with the L shape underneath, this left hand group A is now going to feed through this slot here and pop out. Now if you're lucky all four will go through at once but you may find there's a bit of friction and that, that's not happening so easily. So a technique here is you can usually get two through quite easily. In fact you can see that the white and the blue have gone through pretty easily here. So it was white, blue, red, black. Now, I'll put, if I put the black through, then as I push the black in and drag the blue and the white, a little bit of extra friction on the wire pulls that black through. So now we've got the white blue, and there's a red in the middle that hasn't gone through. So we can feed the red one 
trying to avoid any wrapping and looping and twisting, feed the red one in between these two. One thing that helps here is just to sort of push aside these two wires, make a space. Okay, so there's the red one sandwiched between the white and the blue and the red and the black. Now let's drag all the... there we go. So that's group A threaded through. Now let's just turn this over. Turn it on its back that way. And now we can do group B. So it's kind of the mirror effect. Let's get the order again. It was white, blue, yellow, green white, blue, yellow, green. Holding the wires like that, we're now going to feed these four wires through this other side. Let's see if they all go in one go. And there is our white, blue, yellow, green. Now let's just take up the slack here. The green. I'm getting close now. And when you get to about this point, you should just find that that oval shape slots into the back of the pitch lever and you can do a final bit of pulling through and removing of the slack and now that's what we want and you can see here that we haven't gone past the sharpie marks so we still have that spare wire there now there is another threading process to be done it's a little bit like the last one so let's get back to our white, blue, yellow, green. And we're going to thread this way along the channel. So there's my white, blue, yellow, green. Now I'm going to start again trying to get all four in. But I probably won't get too far. Actually, they all went through fine. But if you have any trouble, you can, you can always do the same trick of putting two in, get those through, and then drag the rest through. Now we turn over. Do the same with this group A, white, blue, red, black. Okay, we seem to have switched to white, blue, black, red at some point. That's not a big problem. As long as we just try to minimize the amount of twisting. So there's white, blue, black, red. Let's see if I get lucky again putting all four wires through at once. This is a shorter distance, so it, it should go through if the other side did. Yep. There, that goes through fine. So white, blue, black, red. Put those through. Actually, I put a bit of a twist in that. You can see it would have been neater to have those the other way around. But again, it's not too bad. That won't cause any problems. Okay, well, if you've got this far, well done. That was the hardest bit. Now we're going to fit the spring and fit the pitch lever. So this is a good time to fit the spring. Let's put the dowel pin over there. Let's hang the spring off it. Then we have a retaining lug and a 10 mil countersunk. Now let's tighten that up good and tight. That should just poke through the, the other side a little bit. That's very well held. Now let's fit the magnet. Usual trick. You can see the dot there, that's where north needs to go. Now we assemble a mag hole unit, similar to one we've done before. This one takes a bearing there. Sensor. Wide up the usual way. Now we fit the mag hole sensor to the pitch lever. Now the position of this is that the wires point in the same direction as the other wires. Like that. And now press everything into place. Now you see there's three lugs. The bottom lug fits into a channel. There's a little groove in the bottom here. So just aim for that right now. 
Okay, that feels like it's in. In fact, one of the tests is that if the lugs are in, you can see all the way through the bottom screw hole. So let us now fit a couple of screws into those bottom holes. Okay, they're in. Now, time just to get the spring in the right place. So we carefully tilt back the mag hole unit, lift up the spring, then we can tuck the spring down here, underneath the bridge. And with the spring held under the bridge, we can put this part threaded M5 bolt right through the center of the body. You can possibly just see that going through the other end of the spring. Now take your Allen key and okay that's the part threaded bolt in place so now we've got a pretty good spring action. Let's just make sure that the sandwich mag hole is pulled back so that we can now put the remaining screws in place. Okay, that's the last one. Nice and secure there. Okay, so that's step four complete and you'll be pleased to hear no doubt that step five is a nice easy one. We're just going to feed these three pitch wires through this slot in the bridge. If that's possible to see just there. Okay, there they are. And those of you watching closely may notice that this white wire is now above the spring. In the clip below, it was below the spring, and what I also sneakily just did was take out this bolt, put the white wire above it, and put the bolt back in again. Okay, it's time to connect up these three wires. So, let's start with the red. The red is another share of these shared positives at the far end. So we will take this out, Take our reds out, add a fourth red, and now just fit all those reds back around there and tighten that up. That's the red. Next the blue. That blue is going to join these blacks. And now add that blue to the blacks. And finally the white. That white is the one that will join this green down at the end here. So that's the green and the white. Green and white joined up. That is all the wiring connected. Now let's just retidy the bridge, taking care first to make sure we pull enough slack through for our roll bearing. And let's just tidy away all these wires. Any loose loops like this black, if you can just put them through the bridge channels, that will keep them from snagging anything. Everything that crosses the bridge needs to go through these channels, these wire guides. Okay, so now we just have a little bit of slack here. And this is where we make use of these slots and guides. A lot of the wires which go to that lower slot can go into this. Okay, it might take you a few minutes, but this is where you should end up. We have no snagging around the pitch spring. We still have our slack here for the roll. No snagging, oh, there's a loose red one. Let's put that in there. No snagging around the front. And then all of the loose wires which were gathering around this side of the body tucked away inside these channels here. And then you can put a 20 mil screw through the side like this. And then we can fit this retaining cap which will just keep everything tidy. And there we are. 
we're ready to put the lid on. So the lid just slots over like this. 8mm screws on the top is the right sort of length. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. We should now have a very nice roll action and a very nice spring action. And I can assure you that part four of this video series is a lot easier than the one you've just done. So we are very nearly there.